Duck Hound. Good day. You're one of Molly's, yes? I'm Atticus. Atticus, you say. Helena Bailey. But you're no Duck Hound. At least five nine I've seen. No, it used to be in a trade though. <sighs> What's the pattern these days? No one has passed the check with her. Her gaze immediately becomes guarded. Oh, my belly never raised any tongue waggers. Get on you. That is annoying. Um that's the rope. I don't think. We are looking for Alina's not telling us anything. No place for a bird to make a home. Oh, we've done that. Maybe the name. Hmm. I'm trying to remember where he is. Isn't there a flag pile? Another dreaded part of. Oh, if Arsenal could only clean up after themselves, then the things wouldn't run so thickly with industrial access. Oh, the guy is gone. Not to be true. Oh, it's you. But I'm troubling over a complex feat of engineering. Can't keep innovation waiting. Just a moment. I've seen you in the big smoke before. Mind telling me your name? All right, old chap. It's Dante Ziegler. Now I must get back to work, but I hope I pass my, my cross again when I'm less occupied. Sakes alive. That's a self-centered tinker if I ever saw one. He's brushed me off like a bit of dust. I say, would you be interested in buying any bits and bobs I come across? You mean cocks? Sure, I'd be happy to pay for those. Let me see what sell them. Bet you find, of course. I can't let your efforts go unwanted. See you later, Mrs. Ziegler. Who's boy officer? Navy officer. Hello there, Chappie. My name's Glenn Forrester, Lieutenant in Her Majesty Royal Navy. You're a minotaur if I'm not mistaken. Atticus dead, and yes, I'm a Minotaur. What about it? Well, of course you're a Minotaur. Sorry if I sound daft, but I'm a collector, you see, of stories. I've encountered many wondrous creatures in my travels around the Aegon. Sultry sirens, terrifying, terrifying krakens, and countless others. Ones thought to exist only in myth, much like the noble Minotaur. Let's hear one of, hmm, let's hear one of your sea tales. As I mentioned, I am an officer in the, in the Royal Navy, and I and not given to spinning wild yarns. As are some of my seagoing brethren. I have witnessed miracles at the Temple of Zeus and have myself spoken with the mermaids of Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. What do you want to tell me? This encounter took place upon Donacia. A rocky little island to the southwest of Sicily. I was the officer in charge of a team of seven sent ashore to replenish our fresh water. The land was more barren than we hoped, and it was many hours before we found a steam high in the hills. Like finding your next kin on a bender. <laughs> there were more there were more ambushed by a cyclops. There were more ugh, there we were, ambushed by a cyclops. 
And this is more like the monster who terrorized Odysseus than London's Ky Cyclops tracemen and scientists there, and what you ha and what have you. This creature was wild, animalistic, and a meter taller than any I had seen before. Can't judge a, a person off their stature, but still, that sort of height does tend to demand respect. It jumped down from a high ledge, and luckily it was focused on us and on our stack of water casts, upon which it broke a leg. It was a little trouble to vanquish the beast then. That's why I rattled him. From your tone, I have feared some kind of disaster. What is it about this incident that rattled you so? What troubles me about this ambush on Trena Trenesia is that from, the, from that day on, I've been consumed with anti-Cyclops prejudice. Logically, I know it's wrong to judge an entire race based on one harrowing event, so I strive to be conscious of these emotions, the better to, the better to counter them. So you're just telling everybody about this. I well understand what it means to be on the receiving end of such prejudice. It haunts me in every corner of London, and for all my size, every time John and Jane seems perfectly confident to insult and belittle me at every opportunity. I too have faced this sort of travel as a dark-skinned man in the Navy. It was a work of many long years to achieve that the rank of lieutenant. Times in which I gave everything I had to my country, the place where my right leg used to be is a testament to that. Indeed, no one could doubt his loyalty and determination. But I learned much as well. Do you know that Cyclops preacher Ellie? He and I have become fast friends. His company has been a sobering reminder of the great eyes stacked against certain people in this world, and how valiant and how valiant and how valiant one must be not only with others but with oneself. Well spoken, sir. I myself have many a time noted the correspondence between prejudice and darker skinned folk. And against people like myself of, let's say, unconventional ancestry? I am glad to have met you, Atticus Daly. Our conversation has left my mind expanded and my spirits lifted. He reached for something in his waistcoat. Here, take this token of my gratitude. A little something I found on one of my seafaring adventures. Good day to you and good luck on your endeavors. Gen Collector. So we meet again, Lieutenant. Newfound mode of self, eh, finicky with rust. Despite its this, this repair, a younger me would have surely stolen this car spot, this conveyance, and hawked it for a fix. Newsboy. Oh, Governor! <laughs> Handsome gent like you must have a chippy tucked away somewhere. Why not dazzle her with some popular sheet music? Little Rob has a latest ballad. Bet those ballads are raunchy to boot. I have, I also have bulletins if you just want the news. One penny a, one penny a piece. That's about the missing orphans. Two orphans have disappeared from Sacred Heart. Do you know anything about it? Sorry to say I do. I know Bertie and Julie personally. I heard they ran away from Sacred Heart. In fact, I talked to them a few weeks back. They were pretty cagey about the orphanage though. Wouldn't say what their gripe was. Easy to get caged when you're in a cage. If I was a betting man, I'd say they had their organs harvested. With all these technology getting better and better, you can just about you can get just about anything swapped out. Like to see the lab where they like to see the wire where, lab where they do that kind of work. Ask about his cast. What happened to your arm? I got I got ugh, I got clipped by a steam gurney. Not two blocks from here. Suppose I should be grateful though. The dandy who hit me took me to a real doctor to get my arm fixed up. You should be careful. It's a dangerous city. Yeah, yeah, old man. So I've heard. And about the decoration on your cast? Oh, I'm glad you noticed. Lady named old Tesca Lincoln painted up for me. She orange source. She's orange source in source square. What about the courtesan, the courtesan killer? You've no doubt heard about the lady escorts who've recently been murdered. Any ideas who might have been behind it? Oh sure, it's got to be a werewolf, sir. Bloodthirsty beasts they are when the might, when the moon is bright. But then again, the moon wasn't fooled on the days they went missing. You should talk to the harpy who runs the place. She's always after them girls like a dog on a rabbit. What about rumors? My friend... Okay, listen now. Listen close, my friend. 
It's in the kind of thing you brought out in the mixed company. The queen is involved in drug trade. Oh, shocking revelation. The queen, you see, but how could she be involved? Well, it's Her Majesty that's behind the whole thing, that is. She personally directs the opium traffic coming into the East Stocks. Her Majesty is the real mastermind of the dock counts, and she herself counts the take from all the London drug dens every Sunday morning while the double takes her place at church. <laughs> What's this country coming to when even the Queen is on the take? You mark my words, the whole empire fall down one day, any day now. What's a bulletin? A woman of ill repute met a grimsley and Oh, we've already read that. He's blunt. You're rather sharp for a cyclops. And you're awful stinky for a minotaur. Oh wait, that's to be expected. You're a lot stink like a born in August heat. If I were a bit older, I'd give him a if he were a bit older, I'd give him a right thrashing. There's no call to get shirty. Oh, side off, why don't you? Tavern. Can we go in? I think that's the, this is the first time we've been in, gone in the, we were able to go in. The Crimson Herring Tavern is the den of the dock house where seaworthy souls and love, land lovers alike can toast to a, a life of crime or anything less devious. The windows are so grimy that no matter the time of day, the only light source is the lamps, each running the risk of being smashed in a bar fight and illuminating the establishment in a much brighter blaze. Drinking, gabbling, rat baiting. It doesn't scream sporting gent. You don't know what, if that doesn't scream sporting gent, you don't know what does. The betting counter opens in the afternoon and the bar even earlier. Only on occasion, always after midnight. Illegal but tolerated pit fights occur in the basement. Buggy Badcock will take your bets at the counter where everything imaginable, from a bachelor's trust to whom you marry, to the number of stray dogs crossing Sora Street out over an afternoon, to how many vagrants would expire in the night can be wagered upon. Huh. On it heads? The most famous fishes of canine combatants are bolted about the fireplace, frozen and snoring eternal splendor. Bartender. No, no drinking on the job, swear. Now then, what can I get ya? You've all been there, you know. But where is that? You know, sozzled when we should be doing our job instead? Bates knew I've been plenty, I've been guilty of it myself. Whether back in my thuggest past, handing out beatdowns on behalf of the hounds or performing street magic. Well, uh, that's, that's a relief. We'll take one. Or right, what? Mother Mary, there's no way that old Tom tastes like a bottle of fix, fixy blood. Not only to curb my vices, but also to preserve my taste buds. I should really avoid the drinks here. Thanks anyway. Where did where's our what? Oh, that's our morning news. Where would it be? I don't think it's this. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. That's all I was looking for. A drunk. You're inebriated. Dulling your senses. Son of a gun. They're gonna mess up some of our, our roles. Skinny broke. Look at this Ganolf. Really awful what an excess of crime and alcohol does to a man. But I don't know him yet. Perhaps he's only guilty of lack of restraint. Jimmy Bedrich. Daily Bedrich. Jimmy Bedrich isn't the type of banter with others. Best find a topic he deems worthy of discussion. 
I'd rather leave him be before he finds a reason not to leave me be. So he's not to be dealt with. Look how big he is. Dog. Girl. Greet the dog. Hey there, boy. Simmer down. Dog hound thug. What are you drinking, friend? I ain't got no friends with horns. He pointedly turns away. Bigoted bugger. Bedding station? I guess she's not here. From me, before me stands Budgie. Molly's accountant looks more like a jailbird than a cog in Doc House machine, or maybe the boot gives that impression. Mr. Daly, looking to bet some bees and honey. Got a couple of events over at Ups and Downs. What would it be? I'm the kind of cove who likes to know what event I'll be betting on. Fair enough. Got ourselves a few sporting gents where we're tossing the baked beans currency at. One on horses, another on steam cars. Then there's one of your favorite chin. Maybe once I occur more capital. Keep telling you to go easy on all that gin you spend money on. Besides, fishermen start as less mercury to drink anyway. Alright, guess it's time to go. Can we? Nope. Let's go. I guess you have to find Molly. Sorry, Square. Oh, no. Fire broken window. Oh, pick it. Good day, sir. Uh, good day to you, madam. Uh, sir? And who might you be? Call me Atticus. Why the will be gone? Look, is something wrong? Uh, no, no, well, yeah, something is wrong since you asked. I'm awfully dry, my lord. Parched something fierce, and me, black purse is gone. <laughs> what exactly happened to this purse of yours? Um, I was minding me on business, just sitting down or lying down for a fee rest over at the wall. Oh, we stole that with, I think, Teddy. This bloke been all over, all nasty, like in fig. And it filters me ten right from my pocket. It was yesterday, I think. Maybe it wasn't the day of of that. I'm sure, M mostly. We were pickpocketing while sleeping on the sh in the street. He thought he was dead. Exactly right. Or maybe I dropped it. Any road, I don't have it, do I? That's the <gasps> important bit. And the feller who done it smelled of brine. It was one of those salty wolf dogs for sure. I'll see if I stumble across it. I'm so I'm crazy about something, Mr. Pickett. How did you end up in such a sorry state? Well, and you high and, and meaty mighty. Come down from your ivory tower to take a look down at the unfortunate song. You want to know how old Poe got this way? Got this way, do you? Never mind. I'll be on my way. Open barrel. Ah, uh, uh, not 
the butcher. I need the priest who should be walking around here somewhere. Consider the hard facts. Another day upon uh black cat. Reassure the cat. Look, it's not as though I'm a monster, even if I might smell like one. It's no use. I better visit the bathhouse soon. Again? Skinny lad. Sir, a moment of your time, if you please. My name is Calvin Quill, sir, and I am an artist. You see me in a reduced station, but soon I shall rise like the morning star among the London elite. Then you can claim to have known me when, as the expression goes. It may be reduced in station, but not in odor, in a door. You mean to say you're panhandling? Not at all, my good fellow. I am a penny poet. Though they cost me dear, I sell my wares cheaply so they all may enjoy them. Buy a poem. Can't go very, I can't go very far wrong with a penny. Here you are. Ah, oh, perfect. Just a moment. There you go, scribbling away. There once was a Minotaur Brown, the toast of old London town, until one day walking the docks, in naught but his socks, he fell into Thames and drowned. Thank you, it er wonderful. Thank you, sir. May the written word always suit your ills and lighten your way. Oh, seriously? Nandy. Obituary. Take a gander at the obituary. Two youngins, Phoebe and Ethan Hollis, die from suffocation while sweeping chimneys. <sighs> Their sister, oh, we read that. Son of a gun. Bladed Dark Hound. Oh, that's through. This is corpse. Those Legos of yours must be hard to walk on. Name's Atticus Daly. Olivia Lynn. I did a deal of work for Molly years ago. How do you like to trade yourself? Once I get the leg augments fitted, I committed to a particular type of work, right? So if you're in my line, Molly's the best around. You know I can't figure out what you're doing out here. Keep in watch. In a manner of speaking, I'm waiting for a customer to pick out that wagon yonder. It's done in good. Cigarettes, mostly. Crap. Where's the freaking... Priest. Farm drain. Station. Clementine. Who's preacher? There he goes. Ah, uh, Isaac spoke upon Abram, his father, and good day to you, sir. I trust those horns you're spotting don't mean a hospitality to the lost word. <laughs> Sorry, that was in poor taste. Mark on the way he's dressed. I've occasionally seen a vagrant stand and preach on the street when sobs on gin, but you're dressed like a real man of the cloth. The church assigned you to this er uh, pulpit. The Catholic Church? Nah. I'll take my orders from the church, but for now I am, as it were, a free agent. The preacher's running from something. I wonder why he, it hasn't caught up. Any road, well met, sir. My name's Eli McBride. May I assume you are a man of faith, mister? De Daily. Atticus Daily. Yes, I am. Tried and true. He's really? 
an unequivocal answer to a simple question. How refreshing. I only wish the path of the Lord has chosen for me. I only wish the path the Lord has chosen for me was laid out so plainly. I didn't mean to imply that my road was an easy one. I was raised from a very young age by a good woman of Sacred Heart Orphanage. From the most part, they are credit to your kind, yet. Yet indeed, I get your meaning exactly, my friend. I myself had dealings with the church's network of orphanages many years ago. Unfortunately, instead of rejuvenating my faith, the experience left me shaken. Hard to imagine a man like you having doubts. Even the strongest among us must be tested, and I am far from the strongest. Who were Jesus' followers, after all? Vagrants and thieves, and where else should you stand to better reach those who need his word the most? We are really a people, a man of faith. Thank you. That is well time reminder. That is a well time reminder of what truly matters. As long as I stick to the work and stay true to the scripture, I cannot stray far. I want to know about the children. Is there a serious subject to discuss with you, Eli? It's for a moment. Ask about Leo and the recently missing orphanage. orphans. Given your experience with the church, I was hoping you might have more information on matters I've been looking into. A friend of mine at the Sacred Heart Orphanage went missing some decades ago, and two young orphans have recently disappeared from the church's care as well. Have you heard anything? Yes, I believe I know rather more than I like about that subject. May God forgive me. You see, I worked at Sacred Heart many years ago under the head priest Franco, a brutal and unforgiving chap. Much, not much of a Catholic at all, to be honest. But it took me a long time, much too long, to realize it. Yeah, I know the fellow you're referring to. If anything, your description is too kind. I turned my stomach to tell you the details. It'll turn my stomach to tell you the details, but this Franco chop had his fingers in many distinctly unchristian pies. The more he included me in his dealings, the harder it was to turn away. But I was a younger man then, and Franco was both physically intimidating and indulged by a vicious temper. Eventually, I came to fear him just as the orphans did. But couldn't you approach someone higher in the, higher in the church? Futile. Somehow, Father Franco had become the proverbial, the, the, the proverbial golden boy. Go on. Worse was yet to come. Franco was enlisted by someone with grand ideals and the monetary backing to implement them. This mysterious benefactor encouraged the priest to form the sons of St. Caruso, a splinter neck officially approved by the church. But with no oversight, I suppose you can buy them for a right amount of silver. And whoever this fellow is, his pockets are bottomless. An, ex an excellent way to hide all matters of sin under the skies of devotion. By that point, I could no longer hide my disdain for Franco's endeavors. I was summarily dismissed and bluntly told I was lucky to walk away without a thrashing. Where did this sect come from? Who was Saint Caruso? A little known Catholic who was slain by the Moors in the, in the 13th century. The, the story goes that he was a talented healer and carver of prosthetic lambs, but was persecuted for trying to convert his patients. Could you be more specific about Franco's endeavors as you term them? I can prove very little, but what I suspect could fill a ledger, prostitution, robbery of public officials, smuggling, smuggling, anything wicked he seemed to have a hand in, and the missing orphans. Now, certainly Franco's nefarious benefactor is behind the disappearances, but of their whereabouts, I have no idea. I'd be very careful about where and of whom you ask those questions. You're a good man, father. It's only a pity I wasn't a better one. I need some time to reflect on all this further, but very much, but I very much enjoyed our talk. God be with you, Atticus Daly. I vaguely recall Father Franco, but the rumor was he was always away on church business. I can't find him unless I know where to look first. Who would know about secret costs and hidden dealings? Is there anything? Is there anyone I know with a penchant for knowing things they shouldn't? What are we getting into? 
Oh boy. Paper falling leaf restaurant. Let's go. Let's travel to the palace. Damn. 